Stephen of England, the controversial monarch who challenged the stability of the kingdom. In England's medieval history, there was a monarch whose reign was marked by a fierce struggle for power and stability in the kingdom. Hailing from a prominent noble family, this leader was immersed in a period of conflict and dynastic strife. His ascension to the throne was surrounded by controversy and divisions, generating a legacy of uncertainty and challenges for the nation. Despite the difficulties he faced during his reign, his rule had a significant impact on the political and social structure of England, leaving a lasting mark on the country's history. Origins Stephen of England, also known as Stephen of Blois, was born in the county of Blois in central France between 1092 and 1097. He was the son of Count Henry of Blois and Countess Adela, daughter of William I the Conqueror, and he had three older brothers, William Theobald Odon, and a younger brother named Henry of Blois. After losing his father at the Battle of Ramla in 1102, his mother took care of him and his brothers in France. Not much is known about his life at the French court in his early years, except that he rode horses, learned Latin, and was educated in history and biblical accounts by his tutor, William the Norman. The Soterio Count Some people are very lucky. Stephen of England had several encounters with death. After becoming a knight in 1112, he survived the war between Henry I and his brother Robert II, who disputed his lands in Normandy. Because of his support in the war, his uncle, Henry I of England, granted him a large number of lands. Several years later, he had a strong indigestion that made him desist from embarking on the engagement voyage of his cousin, William Adeline who drowned after his ship was wrecked in the port of Barfleur on November 24th, 1119. This situation led the king to name his daughter Matilda as his successor, to whom Stephen swore fealty in 1127. The Rise of the Pious King In 1125, Stephen married Matilda I, daughter of Eustace III, Count of Boulogne and Lens, at Westminster Abbey, increasing his family fortune and influence. In the years that followed, he earned a reputation as a wealthy man, well-educated and well-liked by his peers, and above all, very generous with his donations to the Catholic Church. After learning of the death of King Henry I of England on December 1st, 1135, Stephen broke his oath of allegiance to Matilda and decided to march to London to seize the throne, something that was supported by the Londoners as they thought it would give them new rights and privileges to the city. The Conspiracy of the Brothers of Blois On December 15th of that same year, Stephen reached an agreement with his brother Henry de Blois, the Bishop of Winchester, in which he would grant extensive freedoms and rights to the church, in exchange for their support for his ascension to the throne, and for handing over control of the royal treasury. Not only that, Henry of Blois also convinced Hugo Bygod, butler of the royal palace, to declare that King Henry I had changed his mind about the succession on his deathbed, and that he had appointed his nephew as the new successor. However, although the whole conspiracy of the Brothers of Blois seemed to be going smoothly, two problems still remained to be solved. He had to defeat Matilda and subdue the other pretenders to the throne. A bribe for the throne the first rival Stephen had to face for the throne was his own elder brother, Theobald, who met with the Norman barons and Robert of Gloucester at Lisieux on December 21st, 1135, to legitimise his claim to the throne. After learning that his younger brother had beaten him to the throne and would be crowned the next day, Theobald tried to convince the Normans to support him. However, they decided to turn their backs on him to avoid a war with the new king. After learning of his brother's pretensions, Stephen decided to smooth things over by giving him a generous economic compensation so that he would support him and not claim the throne, something that Theobald ended up accepting, not having enough strength to confront Stephen. The Scottish Rebellion After a few months on the throne, Stephen had to face a rebellion by King David I of Scotland, who took advantage of the death of Henry I to invade Carlisle, Newcastle and other key fortresses. Unlike Theobald, King David's aim was to seize Cumberland and Northumbria, located in the north and northeast of England, respectively. To stop David's ambitions, Stephen marched his army northward and met the Scottish king at Durham. After brief clashes, an agreement was reached whereby the Scottish king would return most of the territory he had conquered, with the exception of Carlisle. Grenlian Fedgrifford, the rebellious princess. 
In addition to the Scots, there was another group that disagreed with the rule of the Norman kings in England, the Welsh. After the Norman and English settlers displaced the Welsh from their lands for several centuries, Hywel at Meridud, Lord of Breconshire, decided to put a stop to them, which ended with his victory over the English and Normans at the Battle of Gower in 1136. This situation led Maurice of London and other Norman lords to lead raids against the Welsh of Dehobarth to submit them to the authority of the English throne. This caused Gwynedd, a Welsh princess, to organise an army to defend her territory, while her husband and her father-in-law, Huel at Meridud, organised lightning attacks against the crown forces, taking goods and money, which they redistributed among the Welsh of Derbarth. After a bloody battle near Kidwelly Castle, Gwynedd was defeated and beheaded by the Normans. He was followed to the grave by his sons Morgan, who died in battle, and Malgwyn, who was executed. The Avenged Princess Far from being the end of the conflict, Gwenlian's death caused much more anger and desire for revenge among the wealth. Owain and Cadwallader, the brothers of the fallen princess, invaded Ceredigion and took the towns of Lanferhengel, Aberystwyth and Lanbadarn. Stephen responded by sending Baldwin Fitzgilbert of Clare and the Lord of Marks Robert Fitzharold of Iwius to stop the rebellion. After failing, the king decided to abandon attempts to quell the Welsh rebellion in 1137. Eventually, Gwenlian's youngest son Rhys became the ruler of Derobarth after the death of his parents making life miserable for both Stephen and Henry II in the years of anarchy. The Norban Rebellion while Stephen was juggling to quell Scottish and Welsh rebellions, his greatest enemies awaited him in Normandy, Matilda and her husband Godfrey V of Anjou, who invaded the territory at the end of 1135, causing a series of fires and civilian deaths in their path. This new conflict led to the lieutenant of Normandy, Galerano de Beaumont and Theobald of Blois, being appointed by Stephen as the defenders of the duchy in 1136. After meeting with the French king Louis VI and his brother Theobald the following year, an attempt was made to organise a joint defence to confront the Matilda and Godfrey V forces. Flemish Anarchy As if having to deal with the War of Succession was not enough, Stephen also had to face an internal conflict. A group of Flemish mercenaries hired by Stephen and led by William of Ypres rose up against the Norman faction, which led to a battle between the two halves of the army. A situation that forced the king to sign a truce with Godfrey after the Normans under the command defected, giving Godfrey and Matilda the first great victory in the War of Anarchy. In short, the monarch to whom we refer left a controversial legacy in the history of England. His reign was marked by internal struggles and disputes, generating divisions and challenges for the nation. Although his departure left a void in the political landscape, his legacy endures as a reminder of the challenges and difficulties inherent in the exercise of power and governance. Don't close the video yet! Before you go, please subscribe and leave us a like if you like the content. It will help us grow and continue to make much more content. Now, without further ado, we say goodbye.